Um, what got you into the sport in general? Because athletics isn't, obviously, as you know, it's not the the main sport worldwide. So everyone kind of yeah. gets brought in in a different way. So tell us how you got brought into athletics. Well, when I was younger, in primary school, um, I tried football. I wasn't, I didn't like football at that point in my life. And I wasn't, I honestly wasn't good at it in primary school. I tried mm. cricket. Um, and we are like different sectors. So we tried batting. I wasn't good at batting because other kids was bowling the ball too fast. Mm. Um, I tried bowling. I wasn't the best at bowling. I wasn't actually that bad of a bowler neither, though, but I wasn't the best. And I tried feeling and it was honestly the hardest thing is to catch a ball when it's coming down. And I didn't just feel like a good hit in the head. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't good at that. But um, one thing I, I realized in PE, anything anything we had to do with running or playing catch or anything like that, I was always the fastest. Um, mm. I remember in primary school, we had a game called Catch and Rescue where there's a group of people catching and there's a group of people running. And if someone gets caught, you put them in like a holding cell and yeah. they would, my team would always bank on me to save them because I was faster than everyone. And mm. um, when I was in primary school, we had a tryout for um, zonal games and I did the tryouts. I, I made the, the school team and went to the zonal games and I won zonals, I won district. And when we went to primary school nationals, I came forward. But that's when I kind of realized at that young age, I probably was like eight, seven or eight years mm. old. I realized, well, you know, this is my talent. This is my sport. So, yeah, that's kind of where it started for me. Okay. And is track and field big in Trinidad? It, 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 so track and field, I would say in Trinidad and Tobago, is the most successful sport, hands down. Most successful okay. sport in oh. Trinidad and Tobago. But in terms of popularity, football, cricket, Track and field and swimming kind of battling. I was even yeah. swimming. That sounds yeah. very strange because, like, not a lot of people say swimming. <laughs> yeah, the cricket I can, I, I will vibe with that. That's that's like standard. Football yeah. again. It's like I don't know a country that doesn't like football. So Fox. that's on the that's understandable. Um, so coming through the ranks and and you know as you get older, the competition gets a little bit harder. Is there a lot of competitions in the school system as you get older? Or do you kind or so, does it kind of tail off and then start back again? So in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't really have much of a school system. We probably, as schools, you maybe have four or five meets with a year, but it's mm -hmm. more club heavy. So okay. I would run for my primary school, I would run for my secondary school, but most weekends I would run for my club. And that's kind of how it, it, it goes off um, for us. And yeah, it, it was it was definitely um, more competitive because you would find some kids from North Trinidad that you probably wouldn't see on a regular basis or different parts of Trinidad and Tobago that you wouldn't bounce up until you go to meets and their clubs mm. came together. So we more have a club system instead of um, a school-based system. And yeah, it gets I competitive. That's similar to what we've got here, really, isn't it? Because we're yeah. mainly club. Um, there's obviously probably two, three major school events, but it's generally just club. You have yeah. more competitions for your club than you do anywhere else. Also, a question that I don't actually know the answer, that I've never um, never thought about. Um, do you do competitions with Tobago? Because obviously you're two separate islands. So yeah, do you guys have yeah, we, that kind of setup We do. Well? Yeah. So, so sometimes there's meets in Tobago that we travel to. Most majority mm -hmm. of our meets do is in Trinidad. And they would come over to, to um, compete against us. So yeah. Okay. We definitely go vibes. against the Beagle. Vibes, vibes, vibes. Yeah. Um, what brought you to the decision to go study in the US? Um, when I was young, I had I feel like everybody had this dream. I wanted mm. to be a professional athlete. And yeah. I was weighing my options. And you know, I always used to hear people say you can't um cap all the eggs in one basket, so you always have to have a plan B. And mm. my last year under 20, I ran like I think around 46 to um, 2072. And obviously, that's not fast enough to go professional. So, mm. the next decision for me was to um, go to the US. So, I didn't have the grades at the point in time to go to straight to D1. So, I had to go to junior college and I went to Salt Plains College 
And that's a, a junior college that has a lot of a Caribbean athletes that has been through there. And mm. um, they won a lot of national titles and stuff. So it was definitely a prestige school and a, was a good look for me. So that's, yeah. enough. that's why I made the decision because I didn't have the opportunity to go pro. How did you find the competitions, you know, with the NCAAs um, and other competitions in America? Because obviously they have way more competition than you would have done in Trinidad. So Definitely. what was that um, change like? It, I actually think I kind of went into it and my change was, my transition was smooth because um, I would say one thing is running in Trinidad, there was few, I was more of a 400 meter runner when I was younger and mm-hmm. only at big championships was when I would run 46 seconds. Other than that, any regular race is 47. And when I went to the U.S., well, junior college at least, every single race I was running 46, every race. And it was, like, it just became normal. It was easier. So I guess with the competition and the level, of, the quality of competition and at least that they had there, you have no choice but to step up a game each time you step yeah. on the track because it's either that or you get, you get licks. Dog. You get both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how have you made that decision to switch from... 400 to 200 was that like with your coach and are you still with your coach from trinidad or do you have a coach in the u.s in your in your school system um how i made this switch from 400 to 200 i'm still a 400 meter runner and a 200 meter runner um mm. i just prefer the 200 meters and i feel like i'm better at the 200 meters that's why i pay a little bit more attention to it I still think I have a lot of potential in the 400 meters, but honestly, just I just need to figure out what really works for me. And I think I'm still trying to figure out what exactly works best for me. And um, my coach, that the, the same coach that I had when I went to junior college, I, so I did two years in junior college, and then you leave junior college and go to a division one school. And at the point in time when I was going to make my transition, he got a job at the University of Alabama, and I was like, "Well, I already run fast with him, so I might as well go." So that's how I kind of made my decision. And today, to this day, he's still my coach. So, yeah. So did he oh, have? Right. Did he have like a say in you moving from junior college and going to Alabama? Um, did that kind of help? Yes and no. He couldn't force me, but I felt more comfortable. So I gave him when he left. I gave him the mm-hmm. benefit of the doubt, and I visited other schools also. Like I visited A and M, I visited LSU, um, Arkansas, Texas too. Tech, and Alabama. And by far, I felt like Alabama was a fit for me, not just because my old coach was there, but I felt really comfortable there. So that's kind of how I made the decision to go there. 